Welcome back. You're still with Sport on Prime Time. Now, my guest tonight is Tian Stoffberg. He's written a book. Former Springbok captain and the only player to win the Curry Cup with three different teams. So his new book's out, and it's called Stories from the Touchline. Tian, thank you very much for joining us. Um, can you give us a little bit of a, an insight into the motivation behind uh, writing this book? Because it's a sort of a tell-all book, isn't it? Yeah, it, it came a long way. Uh, you know, I never thought I'll, I'll ever do a book. Uh, and, but, you know, at my age, you're looking back and you find there's a lot of lessons in life. Uh, I had fantastic rugby years, uh, but life has learned a lot of lessons. And, uh, and I think that's what happened here is that I wrote some good stories of what happened in my life. Yes. And I hope uh, there is somebody who will benefit from that. But you're not taking yourself too seriously. I think uh, what we feel from a lot of modern rugby players is maybe the world revolves around them to a certain degree. There's a lot of um, taking the mickey out of yourself and, and pointing out where you perhaps went wrong in, in, in a few scenarios. Um, was that difficult to, to come to terms with or is, is, is just uh, that's the way it is? That's your character. I think that's the way it is, you know, uh, I think I have learned a lot of things, as I said, you know, and, uh, and to put it down onto paper, uh, I think uh, somebody might read the story and at the end you will uh, realize that you make decisions in life where, uh, where it can make a big difference in your life if you do the right decisions. Right, well, we, we're just watching footage now. Uh, I don't think you were scoring that try, but it's Transvaal versus Free State. You started your career with Free State, and it was definitely still an amateur sport when you were playing rugby. Um, do you see any comparisons to the game then and the game now? Yeah, you must definitely not compare it. I mean, it is, it is totally a different kind of game. I mean, the time that went into the rugby in our days, you know, it was two hours a day that we practice a little bit on a Monday, Wednesday and Thursday evenings, and then you play the game on Saturday. And if you look at today, uh, it is a huge difference. And um, you mustn't compare it. That's how I feel. We, uh, if you only look at the money that's involved, I mean, you can't compare that. Uh, we start with five on the home game. I yeah. mean, that is, <laughs> so that is definitely a, a big difference, yes. Right, and then um, you went on to play for Northern Transvaal, uh, and then you switched over to Western Province. Was that a controversial move in rugby at the time to, to cross the Orange River, so to speak? Yes, for sure. You know, in those days, uh, if you look at Northern Transvaal and the Western Province, that was a big derby every year. And, uh, but I had to finish my military training at that stage, and I had to look around to start my own physiotherapy practice. And uh, at the end, that is what happened. I went down to... To Cape Town, and uh, I'm there for the last 32 years. Uh, but you did quite well. I mean, you played for the Springboks 76 to 84, captain them four times, 21 tests. Do you feel you got everything you wanted out of international rugby? Uh, did you leave everything on the field? Yes, I think I had 10 good years uh, where when I've made a lot of friends right over the world. Good rugby friends, as you will read in my book, there's a good things that happened on the rugby field, off the field. And um, look, uh, there was uh, several years because of our political situation at Absolutely. that stage that we lost out. And, and that was sad. Uh, at this, uh, so it's like everything in life. If you can do it all over again, you will definitely do a lot of things different. And, and that's what I learned about it. Uh, it wasn't easy playing for the Springboks at times. Uh, you were part of that 81 tour to uh, New Zealand that uh, had the flower bomb test. You write about it in your book about having a game in Waikato cancelled, going back via the USA and having the FBI telling you guys that uh, you couldn't, uh, you, you know, it wasn't safe to actually take the field. As players, as a group of players, um, what was going through your mind then? Uh, did you think it was worth it uh, to to still be pursuing a career in rugby? Yes, for sure. I mean, uh, at those days, uh, we played rugby for the fun of it. Uh, it was a big honor to play for South Africa. We went on to that tour. We didn't expect uh, what we received on that side. Um, it was tough at, at, at certain days. Um, 
And when they tried to cancel the game, that was very, it was very difficult for us. And, uh, but, you know, looking back now, uh, we are a, a bunch of guys that after, after almost 40 years that we still get together, we are a very good gr um, that, that group that, yeah. uh, that we stick together and we have made a lot of good friends. I mean, part, part of the thing about rugby, um, you know, throughout the ages, even right at the beginning was the touring. Um, and that's what players remember. Do you get the, the sense that the Springboks will look back fondly on the tours, the, the current crop who go to a World Cup? Do you, do you think they get that same camaraderie and we're all in it together and, you know, what goes on tour stays on tour kind of vibe? I don't think they have that. You know, it's professional now. Yeah. Uh, everything that you put in there is professional. Uh, I don't think they have the fun that we had. Um, and, uh, and to them, it, it is a job. They are doing it for the income. Uh, and I think, I think they miss out, uh, but you can't, you can't change the, the clock and, yeah. and look back. And um, yeah, but we had good times for sure. And just when you thought maybe uh, the game was gone for you, around about 91 or so, you were called back to, to coach uh, the parliamentary rugby team. Um, <laughs> tell us about those. Uh, apparently, it was your decision to put Bantu Holomisa on the left of the scrum because of his leftward-leaning le politics. I've put him on, on the right wing because he was so left from the parliament <laughs> side. But I that see. is more the funny side. Yeah, he was on the wing. He yeah. a good wing. He played good rugby down in Eastern Cape. And he was part of our parliamentarian team. And um, it, was a, it was a great experience uh, in those days, you know, where it was tough politically-wise. It was tough. But what we discovered on that tour is that uh, at that stage, it was the three parliament uh, yeah. houses. And the huge difference between the politics in those days. But we went on tour, you know, and I wish somebody could experience that, how the politics guys, yeah. we had fun when they sang together in, in pubs after the game. Sure. We had really a good, good time. And I was so positive after that tour. If those guys can do it, yeah. I, th I hope that the whole world and can look at South Africa and see we can do it. Well, with the goings on in Parliament, it seems like a million miles away. Tian Stoffberg, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, Tian's new book, uh, Stories from the Touchline, it's available wherever you want to get good sporting reads. And it is a very good book, Down to Earth. Tian, thank you very much for, for having us on the show. Thanks very much. Thanks right, for we're going to take a quick break.